Android 12 QPR 3 is not a football score, but the next release of Android 12, following the recent launch of 12L earlier this month. So what is it, and how is it different from all the other versions of Android 12? Take a sec to subscribe to Android Central right here on YouTube, and we'll jump in. It seems like there's an alphabet soup of different flavours of Android 12 to choose from. First there's Android 12 itself, which was released last October and has been rolling out to various phones over the past few months. Then there's Android 12L, which was pitched as an update mainly for big screens, but also rolled out recently to some Pixel phones as the March feature drop. And now the new Android 12 QPR 3, which stands for Quarterly Platform Release 3, and is available to test through the Android beta program ahead of its launch in June. In any of those cases though, if you look under System About Phone on any device running either baseline Android 12, or 12L, or even the new 12 QPR 3, you'll just see Android 12. So yeah, it's kind of confusing. The problem here isn't really to do with the software, but the kind of opaque branding that's being used. A lot of people might assume that Android 12L is just for tablets and foldables, or it's a separate branch of Android for those devices kind of like we had way back with Android Honeycomb. Also, if QPR 3 is the third quarterly platform release of Android 12, then what happened to the first two? And is this QPR a continuation of Android 12L, or is it a separate branch? Google kinda explains what's going on in this statement on its official developer site. Following the stable release of Android 12 to AOSP, we continue to update the platform with fixes and improvements that are then rolled out to supported devices. These releases happen on a quarterly cadence through quarterly platform releases, QPRs, which are delivered to AOSP and to Google Pixel devices as part of feature drops. So here, Google is very publicly talking about these quarterly platform releases. In the past, QPRs were quietly released for previous Android versions like Android 11, 10, and 9. Before that, in older Android versions like Android Oreo, they were called maintenance releases, MRs, and they weren't tied to any quarterly schedule. So QPRs aren't new, but the fact that Google's testing them publicly is new, and probably not a bad thing considering how buggy the early releases of Android 12 were, especially on the Pixel 6. This hopefully means everything should be more stable when it rolls out to the masses. So this new beta you can test right now on Pixel phones is the third QPR for Android 12. As Esper's Michelle Rappen explains on Twitter, the first was the big Android 12 bug fix update that landed in December, and the second was Android 12L that just arrived in March. So 12L contains everything that was already in that December patch, and QPR 3 contains everything that was in 12L. It's a straight up progression of newer versions of Android here, there's no fragmentation going on. A couple of unusual things are going on though. First, Google is actually talking about QPRs now and letting Pixel owners test them months ahead of release. And second, we've had the anomaly of Android 12L, combining the second QPR with a bunch of new tablet and foldable features, and new APIs for developers. So it's not super obvious that each of these is just a newer version of Android. To further demystify this stuff, let's take a look back at how Android releases used to be numbered before we had Ls and QPRs all over the place. First you had your major Android versions, the ones that used to get sweet treat nicknames. The big annual Android releases with a bunch of new user-facing features and new APIs for developers to let apps do new things. They typically arrive in late summer and be accompanied by a new Nexus or Pixel phone. Think Android 7, 8, 9, whatever. Then sometimes you'd have a point release, like Android 5.1, 5.2, 7.1. These weren't major new versions, but they did introduce new APIs for developers, so they're a big enough deal to bump up the number by 0.1. Then you'd have your minor Android updates, like Android 5.1.1 or 7.1.1, usually bug fix or really small updates that change things behind the scenes but don't introduce new APIs or anything as major as a full point release. Under the old, less confusing number system, you'd have your baseline Android 12 as Android 12.0, then in December that big first bug fix update, QPR1, probably would have been Android 12.0.1, and then Android 12L with its new APIs for tablets and foldables would have been Android 12.1, and Android 12 QPR 3 would have then come along as probably Android 12.1.1. The old numbered releases give you a better idea of what's going on and how big of a deal each subsequent version was, but they also kind of gave the impression that once a point release came along, the original release was now old. And that's not really the case, especially since you have Android security patches now that work independently of whichever Android version you might be on. Which seems to basically be why Google just has Android 12 now when you look on your phone's about page. What we're really moving towards here is three software channels, if you like, for Pixel phones, depending on the trade-off of how soon you want new stuff and how stable you need your device to be. 
First you have the developer preview, that's the stage Android 13 is currently at, where you can expect things to be early and potentially pretty broken. Then you have the Android beta program where it's still pre-release but things like Google Pay and DRM still work, and at the same time you get to play with new Android features up to three months early. And then of course there's the stable channel which most people will be using and is expected to be rock solid stable. So Android 12 QPR3 Beta 1 gives Android fans the chance to test the next minor release of Android ahead of its launch on Pixels as the June 2022 feature drop. It's a successor to Android 12 L and will eventually be succeeded itself by Android 13, and hopefully all this beta testing will mean that future Android versions will be a lot more stable than the early days of Android 12. As for new user-facing features in QPR3, we're not really seeing anything in this build just yet. Not too much of a surprise there considering that most of the feature drop features from Google are rolled out as updates to individual Google apps. In any case though, hopefully that's given you a better idea of what Google's doing with Android updates and why there are all these different beta versions floating around. Let us know what you think down in the comments and subscribe to Android Central so you don't miss future videos like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.